You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. Welcome to another episode of Real Realtors, and I'm excited for this episode. When I began my career in real estate at the age of 18, I had two mentors. My guest today is one of those mentors. He's also one of the top agents in the Bay Area. Now, when you hear of an agent's sales volume, many agents claim to be the top producing agent. Yet, the average real estate agent sells about $1.7 million per year. And in the Bay Area, that can be one to four homes per year that they actually sell. Gary Toretta consistently sells over $30 million every year that I've known him, and it's been now 14 years. The biggest takeaway for real estate agents from this episode is you have to be consistent and you have to be a presence within the community. This was a great episode to record while we drank a wine called The Competitor out of Gary V's Wine Club. Enjoy. Okay, so I am recording now and my guest today is one of my original mentors in the real estate industry. That was 14 years ago. Can you believe that? Hard to believe how time flies, huh? Yeah, yeah. So you were like 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was 18 when I got my license yeah. and started here at Security Pacific, <laughs> and uh, started working with you and Jack as a buyer agent, helping you guys on your fixers and working in Latino buyers. You know, that was 2003 when everybody was buying a house. Too. Yeah. So that was definitely fun times. You got to see a lot in 14 years, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then from there, you and I really partnered up when Jack became one of the managers and owners of the company because then we started doing foreclosures together. Correct. And we did that for four years? Yeah, at least. I would say four or five, yeah. Yeah, so we did that for a few years, and then we did some management, which we still have a management company together. Right. And then um, now you're still the top agent here at the company been a long time (laughs) (laughs) now you've been the top agent here at security pacific for i mean as far as i know i think in the 14 years i've been here maybe one or two years someone else topped you and i think that was during the reo and that was really just because of the splits that teams had but if you looked at individual production i think you were the number one agent here so i want to get into a little bit of your history we're going to talk a little bit of current topics and um, what I like to do with this Real Realtor episodes is um, because there's a lot of real estate agents that will listen to the show. And so what I want to do is give them tips and advice on how they can, you know, do one extra sale, build their business a little bit more to get to your level. Because right now you're doing like 30 to 40 million dollars a year consistently. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just amazing. And you've been doing that for so many years. It's been a long time, but it's taken me a long time to get, you know, to that production, you know, especially in a normal market, you know, in an REO market, as you know, Mark, in an REO market, uh, you can put up some pretty amazing numbers, but we haven't been in an REO market for a while and I don't honestly see one in the foreseeable future. Yeah. Well, so we were just talking about the big event over in Wanna Creek and Joel Singer, the CEO for the California Association of Realtors, he had... Like they're predicting for values to continue going up about 4% for 2018. And just the shortage of the housing supply, number of people moving into California. um, There are a lot of people moving out, but the entire demographic of the state is just changing dramatically. And basically, the lack of housing is creating the increase supply and demand. Supply and demand, simple, simple economics. So, what year did you start real estate? 1986, I got licensed. Uh, but, you know, honestly, I was still coaching and teaching and working for my dad in his grocery store. So I would say I probably didn't really go full time until about 87. So I, I, I consider this year like my 30th year in the business. Um, and who is your original mentor? Uh, you know, actually, a, a man named Tom Gazzano is the one that got me into the business. And he used to be used to work for my dad in his grocery store. And we our common thing was that not only were we family friends, but... He went to St. Mary's College like I did. And so when I was coming out of college, I remember him saying, like probably at a graduation party or something, hey, what are you going to do you know, after school? I said, well, I'm going to play football. 
you know, because <laughs> at the time I was signed with the Rams as a free agent, and I, you know, I, th- I hadn't really thought that much about it. I was just, my mind was like, I want to play football. And he said, okay, well, you know, <laughs> if it doesn't work out, uh, give me a call because, you know, I think you can do good in real estate, you know. So he was kind of, I would say, the first one that got me into it. I worked for him only for a year, and then ever since then I've been with Security Pacific, so like I'm in my 29th year. Okay, I thought you worked for him for a few years, but only one then. Yeah, just a year. Okay. Now, Pinole has always been your market. I mean, you grew up in Pinole. Right. You've lived in Pinole all your life until maybe just a couple years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Um, my dad was in business in Pinole. He owned a grocery store and a liquor store and gas station and a bar. So my dad was in, my parents were in the retail business, and my mom was real involved in community stuff, you know. So we... And then I have three brothers, so we all grew up in Pinole and played sports and, you know, you know, just my, we spent all of our life there. And I think just our network was pretty big because of the size of our family and, you know, all of our, you know, participation and then my dad being in retail business. Yeah. Now, you've been in real estate, you said 29 years? Th- actually, 30. this is my 30th year. 30th yeah. year. Wow. Time goes by real fast, huh? It does. It's hard to believe. I have to shake myself when I hear myself say that. I'm like, I must be old. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if you read uh, NAR, the National Association of Realtors, released a report that today's new children being born are going to be living up to 150 years old. Wow. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you're in an industry for 30 years, you're going to be, you're still a baby. You could switch to another industry for another 30 years. I wish I had some talent. (laughs) Well, you do. So I have to say one of the awesome things when I started working for you and just growing up in my own career and working with you is just seeing like you're very charismatic and I think like you're an amazing salesperson to watch and and I think salesperson is even the wrong word to use because I think what you do and you do a really good job of it is making people feel like you've known them forever. Like like family is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I'm fortunate, you know, probably because I get to work with so many people that I either know personally or that know someone really good that I know personally. So there's that connection. And I think that's what really has helped, you know, really helps a lot is – I'm fortunate that I get to work with a lot of people that I know, you know, so it's not, it's not hard sale, you know, it's kind of easy sell. Now I I do have to say this because it's one of the best stories ever. One that (laughs) Uh Jack told me about where he sent you, this was when you guys were partners and he gave you an address for a listing presentation. You went to the completely wrong address, came back and realized it was the wrong one. You went back to the correct one, and you came back with both listings. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you went to the wrong property luck and the, got them to sell their house. Luck of the draw. <laughs> Just goes to show you, huh, Mark? Go to the. You can go to any door and never know what's gonna what's gonna come about. Yeah. You know, when so they open it. Did you ever do door knocking before? You know, very little. I'll be honest. With you, I've done a little bit of it. I kind of think that uh, for me, for my style, I'm not opposed to going. Mm-hmm going out in the neighborhood, but I think what I would prefer to do would be kind of just, you know, kind of walk a neighborhood and maybe have some information or something of value to give to somebody that they could use, you know, and, you know, I, you could, you could knock. I mean, I think the people that do it consistently and do it well, probably do very well. But for me, you know, I think I probably just walked more neighborhoods than anything, hung something on a door, uh, giving people information on the sales of that are currently in their neighborhood. And probably staying consistent with the marketing, too, because you still do the calendars. Yeah. Right? You know what? It's, it's funny because I'm not saying that my stuff is the best by any means. I mean, in fact, sometimes I look at it and go, God, I still do that. But I think it just goes to show you when you're consistent with anything over a, a long period of time, it, it works. I mean, I honestly believe, like I send out, you know, my count, my sports calendars for, you know, the pro sports teams and the college teams locally and stuff. And I send that stuff out and, and People will call me and say when they sell their house 20 years later, they say, hey, you know, you've always had me on your mailing list. I don't even know how they got there a lot of times. I've been on your mailing list. It could have been one of my assistants putting them down. And they call me and say, you've been mailing me this stuff all this time. So I feel like I had to list with you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I remember there was one year where there was a delay in printing those calendars. And it was going to be maybe... 
three to four weeks delay and they were going to get the calendar. But people like expected – what month do you send them? Is, is it about now, October? Yeah, we just – well, we just sent them for the football season. Oh, we so try to send them August. like July, July, August is when we send them. You're exactly right. When people that d- count on getting them don't get them, they're calling. You probably remember the calls from people saying, hey, why am I off the list? Yep. It's like, well, you're not off the list. But sometimes in a couple of years that there's been a problem with the companies and the shipping or – that maybe a natural disaster. Some for some reason they get delayed, but it's kind of funny, kind of cool to see that because when you realize that because there's a problem or a delay, you realize there are people who really do care a lot. And they want that stuff, you know. So yeah, and it keeps your name out there. You know, I mean, I I do like the refrigerator magnet, so my name's on somebody's refrigerator with the schedule. Yeah, Just, and you also do the bus bench. I do the bus bench. Now, how does that work? Because more and more every year, there's less and less ads, but yours continues to stay in the same spots. I know. It's funny. I, I mean, I've honestly tried to get rid of those bus stop, you know, benches. They're good salespeople, though. <laughs> they were. I mean, every time, I swear, right when I get ready, it seems like I used to think for the longest time it was maybe the bus bench uh, bus stop people because, uh, you know, when the contract comes up for renewal because it comes up every year and, like, right before – they would seem like I'd get one or two calls, and I would just ask, how'd you get my number? And they said, oh, it's off your bus stop. Bus, I live right by there, and got your, that's how I got your name. And so I get, I'll list a house or two, and I'm like, I can't get rid of them. And some, and they're not that expensive, you know. Yeah, you have one on Pinole Valley Road, which is a great location because everyone's going in and out of Pinole Valley Road right. to get to the highway. And it's right across the street from Trader Joe's and right. that entire shopping center. And then you have another great location that's over there on the Dam Road. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I think that one on the Dam Road, I probably get more people that notice it. Yeah. Well, there's so many people that commute that way. Yeah. Like in and out. And it's so visible right there on the corner. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that, you know, that goes Dam Road, they're going into other parts of Central County, be it Orinda or Oakland or or Walnut Creek, Lafayette. So I know a lot of people out there. And so they, they always make a point of telling me, hey, yes, your bus stop, your name is still on that bench. Yeah. <laughs> so it's about being <clears throat> consistent. And um, what are some of the, uh, like, some of the challenges that you faced over the years? Because you've been in business for a long time, uh, more than the average uh, real estate agent. So you've seen the various cycles. So what would be like the number one, number two tip that you could give people? Stay positive. You know what, honestly, because it's easy to get, and I've actually learned a lot of that from people around here and Jack being one of them, Jack Burns being the, his father, the original broker and, and even Jack Jr. It's like they were two of the most positive people. And, you know, they would, I would talk to them about stuff. I, I like to read the news. I like to follow the news and I'm pretty well informed. And I remember I would say stuff to them and they would be like, we didn't even hear about that, you know? loss of jobs or whatever it was <clears> there <throat> was negative news about the economy or whatever and i learned early on don't get caught up in that you know there's people that are always going to need to be able to have they're always going to there's always going to be a need for them to buy or sell a house okay <clears throat> so that's really good advice so just keep focusing stay positive, stay positive focus on the doing. people that need a move as right. opposed to you know what's going on in the overall economy correct um, I forgot who said this, and you do a really good job of this. When someone comes up to you and says, how's the real estate market doing? You always say, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> and and I'll admit, I have the problem of sometimes being too honest, which <laughs> sometimes I'm like, well, you know what? I think prices are going to drop next year by 3%. <laughs> and people look at me like, you know what? I really did not want to know that. <laughs> I think I think it doesn't. Yeah, you're right. It's like you know, I mean, there's no there's no sense when we get in a down market, as you know, when it, it can last for several years. Which you even for the amount of time you've been in the business, you've seen it a couple times now. Yeah, just so one you, cycle though. Yeah, but you've seen it, and you know how it can it can go down. It was, you know, I know <clears throat> when we were doing those REO sales in like 08, 9, 10, 11, it was dropping all those years, and then in twelve it started turning around. Right? Or was it eleven? I can't remember. Yeah, it was around. Um, 11 and 12, it started to turn around yeah. because in 2010 is when they passed that Dodd Frank Act, right? And then that's when everything started to change, right? Yeah, but officially, I think the bottom, bottom 2012, yeah, it's some areas you could probably argue 2010, right? Yeah, I mean, remember those homes in Richmond for 50 grand? Yeah, I know, <laughs> wish we bought we some, all, we all wish we could have bought some, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure, yeah, so, um. So stay positive and just focus on the current clients that actually need to 
need to sell properties. Yeah, stay positive, stay focused on your business. You know, have a business plan. As you know, you're great about that too, Mark. Have a business plan and, and just follow it, you know. And now, you work mainly in listings or? I'm, I'm primarily a listing agent, but I, I love working buyers, you know, especially when they come referred to me and, uh, you know, or they're from like one of my previous past clients, uh, uh, kids or relatives, you know. So, no, I, I work buyers and sellers. I mean, it just so happens probably a bigger percentage of my business is sellers. I think that's what I've kind of specialized in. Okay. So on this show, I've had a few buyer agents. So I want to get a listing agent's perspective in how dealing with sellers is a little bit different than buyers. Because there exactly. obviously is a difference between the two. No doubt. Sellers are, are looking for service, you know, and so are buyers. Um, everybody's looking for service, but sellers, it's a little bit, I think, easier for them to track. Like, hey, what have you done? They want to see what the, what is the marketing plan? What are you doing? You know, and I think the biggest thing is if you just stay in contact with them, you know, and, to, and just be honest with them. Here's where I'm, here's where I'm doing, what, here's what I'm doing to get your house sold. And here's where I'm putting the effort and the money. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's pretty much the most important thing, staying in contact and just doing everything that you can. Um, to give them service. Okay. Um, now, marketing. What additional marketing do you do? There's a lot of agents that simply just put the house up on the market. I know you still do flyers, correct? Yes, we do. I do brochures. You know, I do some really nice brochures. Depends on the the house. You know, the price of the home. A lot of times, because the cost for you know the the really high end brochures can be very expensive. So, um, but I always put out a nice brochure, no matter what the price of the home is um you know virtual tour we do i do mm -hmm. professional photography I think do you that's still use uh, gary feldman yes i do okay yeah i use uh, gary feldman professional photography and uh, he does a virtual tour and we uh, hook all that up to the mls uh, i'd like to have all of our you know we'd like to definitely have termite and sewer lateral inspections so that and all the disclosures done even though sometimes we don't get them on, on right as the house goes on, but we usually always have them up before offers are going to be reviewed. Now, one thing that um, also amazes me is that a lot of agents, when they start building a listing inventory and repetitive business, they tend to outsource a lot of their open houses. And I know I've done a lot of open houses for you, right. but at the same time, I was doing open houses that you couldn't do because you yourself were doing open houses. Correct. You still do open houses. I, I still do. I see you sometimes yeah. on the weekends running in and out of the office <laughs> grabbing your signs. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I still do open houses. I mean, you know, I figure. Now, uh, why? Why? Uh, you know what? Because it keeps me out there in the community. You know, honestly, a lot of home sellers come through open houses. Everybody thinks that, you know, only buyers come through open houses you know, or buyer's agents, but honestly, a lot of sellers are coming through the open house and they want to see who you are, what you do, what you're doing. And, um, uh, they kind of, you know, informally, a lot of times interview you, you know, and I see it. And then sometimes I'll, like they'll walk up and say, Hey, do you mind? Can you come by and take a look at our house after the open house? I mean, it's happened to me many times. I mean, too many times to count. So I use them as to, to do business. Okay. Know? And so it's about, keeping that presence yeah within I think, the community yeah and seeing the people and uh, just keep I think keeping the presence and, and having my name out there and and even you know getting to see who's coming into the houses you know and then like I said a lot of a lot of potential sellers are, are going into the open houses and it's a great way for sellers to get an idea of what their home is worth as well as buyers I mean I've had buyers that come that see me at multiple open houses and they may have had an agent and then I see him months later, and I, and then they they'll come to me and say, hey, you know, do you think you could you'd be willing to work with us? And I said, well, I thought you had an agent. And they said, well, we don't want to work with that person anymore. It didn't work out for whatever reason. It's happened to me too. It's happened to all of us, right? Yep. And so uh, I said, sure. You know, as long as your as long as your agent is aware that you're not working with them, you know, I'm not going to work with someone that's already working with another agent. So I've actually gotten business from buyers too in the open houses, and I think it's just a good way to stay out there. Yeah. Now, one thing that you also do is you sometimes bring on agents on board to help you out, and you also do some mentoring. And I believe right now you have someone new on your team, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I'm in the process of bringing on a young guy to, that's helping me. His name's Garrett Mann, and his client, his family are clients of mine. 
and some relatives and stuff. I've sold uh, real estate for their family, and Garrett just recently graduated from UC Davis, and he has an interest in going into uh, residential real estate, and he's a real bright kid. I think he'll do phenomenal. Yeah, and so he's just kind of just starting right now. We're just kind of starting to work together just as we talk. Yeah, that's one thing I think anyone young coming into the business, and you know what, even not young, I mean, you're fresh in the business. I think the number one thing to do is to find a mentor, join a team, or figure totally some things to where you can learn. I mean, just how you learn is going to be scaled and accelerated at a much higher level than you trying to yeah. figure stuff out on your own. I mean, that's exactly what happened with me, with you, no Jack. Doubt. No doubt. I mean, all of a sudden, I was, instead of me trying to figure out. I was going to say, look at you or look at Danielle. It's like a lot of people that have worked for me have gone on and been very successful. And I'm not saying it's because of me, but it helps a lot. It I think does. it gets you to that point to excel a lot, a lot sooner. Yeah. When you see people that are doing a lot of business, you know, it just I think makes you, you know, evaluate some things and obviously you you because you've touched on a lot of them right here just in the short time we've talked yeah and i I think what it comes down to is experience i mean you could have all the knowledge in the world but if you don't have experience you're lacking experience correct and i think when you're new if you join a team or have some kind of mentor that exposes you to many transactions that's how you build up experience. No doubt. That's what I mean. Remember when we were selling like two or two hundred and fifty properties per year during the REO? I know. You, we I built mean, a hell of a team together. We did. We had seven people on payroll yeah. staff here in the office, and we were just turning them in and out. But all that, all that experience helped us out a lot. And so, one thing I tell people too is. Um, don't be afraid to partner up with people. I don't know if you remember, but when the whole REO market uh, started to come out. I went up to you and I said, hey, let's jump back into this and let's totally. partner up. And you had the clientele or the connections, really. The connections, yeah. Yeah, and then I can build the actual team. Together we work and put that together, and that's what we did. We were a good team, man. Yeah. You did an, an awesome job. And I'm glad because if you hadn't have approached me and say asked me to do that, I would have not, I would have not re-engaged because Jack and I had built a team before. We'd already been through a couple of cycles. And I just, I don't think I had the energy just to do it <clears throat> myself again by myself. You yeah. Know? I just, yeah, and, it's and so much more fun and to be, a, have a team and have a partner. So for me, I was, it worked out great. And I think for you too, we had some really good years. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. For, yeah, for sure. And I, and that's really and what I think. we had a lot of fun with it, right? What's that? We had a lot of fun with it too. We did. It wasn't always work. I mean, it was, there was we had fun We also. golfed a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk about the wine here that we're drinking because usually I don't drink wine on the Real Realtors episodes, but on the other episodes, we drink plenty of wine. Um, so this wine is called The Competitor. It is, um, it's not, it's sponsored by Gary Vaynerchuk, and I found this through his new wine club. It's literally $55 a month, and he'll send you anywhere from one to four bottles of wine super cheap i mean you can't go wrong with it right and this bottle competitor is about 20 bucks i think if you buy it but one of the other bottles i don't even how do you pronounce that name the this one here yeah. the laveau don jean chateau de pop de pop that one's like a 60 70 dollar bottle alone and that came in the 55 dollar wine shipment that's amazing that's a phenomenal wine like i said i've only i've been to paris once and that was a couple of years ago but we went to that winery in bordeaux yeah i was just over in napa um uh, wine tasting over at chimney rock and uh you know in the tasting room they were telling us the differences between um french wines or mainly european wines and american wines and how the europeans have a taste for very old vine wine right and americans are more into the fruity big fruit big fruit yeah um fresh newer type of wines and so it was very interesting and i hadn't really drank a lot of european wines right. um some italians chianti is that sort of thing yeah but not really many french wines and so when i tried this immediately when you try the bottle you know the difference yeah i mean you can taste the difference Very between distinct. american yeah. and french it takes you a little while too because at first you're kind of because i know some of the wineries that you like and you like you're like me i think you like big fruit bold yeah. wines you know um i mean i like a variety of, of that but I, I do like have a tendency to like bigger fruit but over there yeah it's way different you know the wine's got more tannins and um it's just got you know it's just not as fruity yeah 
Now, what's crazy, though, is I was in Napa and left Napa about an hour, maybe an hour and a half before the fires started. Wow. And that was uh, trippy to see. Like, just, like, it was an amazing day in Napa. And then to see everything happening at nighttime and then the very next day in the week and how that developed, it was just, like, unbelievable. Like, it's really sad. And so now they have looks like 5,700 homes have been lost in Northern California due to the Not fire. Real. And they're talking about 4 to 5% of the housing stock is lost. I mean, that's just going to be, like, I mean, that's just disastrous. It's disastrous. It's terrible. I mean, it's, you know, it's not in the, as you know, like you mentioned, this housing supply is already at a big-time shortage, you know, and now this is just going to make it even uh, more challenging. Yeah. You know, because going forward, I mean, those 5,700 people, you may not see it immediately, but a lot of those homeowners are going to be looking for homes to buy, and they're going to be in the market. You know, not all of them are going to obviously move down here into West Contra Costa, but some will. You know, yeah. There's going to be some, and it's not like we have a ton of supply. Yeah. So. Um, I haven't heard any news on the insurance companies, how that's going to affect them, because I'm sure I everyone's heard they're gonna... just so overwhelmed because of the disasters that happened back east. And now with this, that they're just so overwhelmed. I mean, this is going to be a process. I mean, they'll emerge probably better. I mean, all those areas, as you know, they'll rebuild and they'll be more beautiful and better than ever. But it's going to take a long time. I mean, just I think obviously we have a lot of experience with the Oakland Hills fire mm -hmm. in Oakland Hills and Berkeley and all that that went through through there. You can remember it was like a, for the longest time it looked like a nuclear wasteland, you know. Yeah. But now you look you up there and it's like, beautiful They've, it's been come back but it takes a long time yeah yeah and there's a lot of people going to shelters and um i think i know that some insurance companies will uh pay for them to find a rental property so um i definitely see that happening but one thing that's uh pretty sad to hear is that there's a lot of undocumented field workers that are avoiding shelters and oh, creating man. makeshift shelters wherever they can because they're afraid, afraid of being rounded up. Oh, boy. So um, uh, Kim is, uh, my girlfriend is currently working on that. putting together donations yeah. to take up to Napa, Sonoma, Santa Rosa to, um, you know, at least provide for them too. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. More people uh, need to be like that because I heard they can, they need all the help they can get. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, four to five percent of the housing stock lost. I mean, just in California, that's that's crazy. It's disastrous. Yeah, um, and that definitely won't help out the housing market. Now, and speaking of the housing market, um, do you notice millennials buying homes? I do, but maybe not at the percentage that I would that I would think. Honestly, like I kind of look at who's buying my my listings and mm -hmm. i would say i'm surprised like the average age you know a lot of the a lot of the average age of the buyers is people are in their still in their 40s or 50s they're really not millennials okay know? um yeah that's one thing that uh the california association of realtors were talking about and how more and more they say the home ownership rate right now in california is dropping by 2025 it's going to be under 50 percent in california wow if Trump's tax policy actually moves forward the way it's currently proposed, we're actually going to see that happen um, by 2020 because part of the tax policy, they'll be getting rid, rid of the uh, mortgage interest. Well, they changed the rules. So they're going to double the standard deduction, but then they're going to reduce um, other uh, deductions you can take. So they had a very interesting chart, and I'll have to find it and link it up. But currently right now Californians are able to take out about 175 billion dollars in tax deductions if this plan moves forward they'll only be able to take 34 billion wow yeah so it's huge so be mixed between that and everything else it's so the home ownership rate amongst people under the age of 35 is less than 20% wow yeah that's amazing but I've also seen studies where they show that the average home buyer is about 32, 33 years old. So mm -hmm. I wanted to get your take on, you know, 
what you've seen, if you've been seeing millennials purchase homes. Yeah, I, I have, but I would say that not as big a percentage as I would expect, you yeah. know, based on their, how many of them are in the Bay Area especially, you know, but they do come, but it seems like they're slow to come. Like, I, I mean, I've sold, I think a couple of my listings have sold recently with, you know, couples that are in the tech industry and live, both live in, San, they live in San Francisco and been living in a high rise and renting and they have just, you know, decided to move out, you know, out here, like one house is in Pinole, one house is in El Sobrani. Well, I'm sure their mortgage is going to be cheaper than what their rent was yeah, in San Francisco, for sure. right? For sure. They gave themselves a big break. Yeah. But, yeah, you see it, but it just seems to take – and they just said, they go, hey, we lived in the city for 10, 15 years. We had a great run, but we're we're done. You know, we don't want to deal with the city stuff anymore. And yeah. so they're kind of excited. So I think you'll see more and more. It's just going to take a while, you know. Yeah. Okay. So because you've been in the Pinole community literally all your life – um, you know the areas here in West Contra Costa, in and out. So, what are so what are some of your favorite places to eat at? We're gonna switch this up a little bit. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you know I, I mean I, I would say that uh, well I go to Pear Street Bistro in Pinole a lot. You know Francisco is a friend of mine and Gary Gary the owners, and uh, so I go there. I also go to La Strada. Is on my is like the top of my list martin's a friend also and gotten to be friends with all the waiters Terry, they've been around forever they've too, been around right? for a long time and i also like Douay rose you know and then there's you know there's actually another new italian place that just opened la familia and uh you know so it's like, yeah it's like I'm t- so many italian places got to put a plug in for somebody else <laughs> <laughs> so that last one you just mentioned where is that one uh, it's over there uh, by Sugar City. You know where Sugar City is in yeah. Pinole? They opened over there um, in that kind of newer development turn. It was supposed to be, I think, a different kind of user in that in there. But now all of a sudden they have restaurants going in and stuff. So Okay. That's yeah, on San Paolo Avenue, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. And uh, best bar. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's like I gotta, I gotta say, you have to pitch. You know, (laughs) you know where I, you know where I, where I hang out. I I like going to the Antlers, but uh, I've been going to somewhere else too. They have a good sports bar. I don't know if you've been there yet. No, I haven't been there. You haven't been there. They just opened up. They just opened up in El Sobrani. Yeah, yeah, and they got a a hell of a sports bar. So, and I, you know, I'm one of the owners of that property, the real estate, not the bar, the real estate. So of course, you know, that's my tenant. So I got to support him. Yeah, I'll have to go check it out because they're right next to my tattoo guy. That's right, Nate. Yeah, yeah. You should. You'll be you'll be pretty amazed. I mean, he's got a giant screen TV, and people love watching like you know big time sporting events there. Well, they have more than just one big TV, right? They have a ton of TVs. They have a ton of TVs, but they have one giant screen. That one's the one that's like really fun to watch games yeah. on. Okay. Now you live out in Alamo. Is that correct? I live in Alamo. So out in Central County, favorite spot to eat. Probably, I know there's a lot of good restaurants. There is too. a lot of good places. I would say probably uh, Prima would be probably at the top of my list in Walnut Creek. I like Prima a lot. Because it's downtown on North Main, right? But you know my favorite restaurant, I think, and to eat at, very favorite place is actually in Oakland. It's Wood Tavern. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> that's what, that's that's my top three. Yeah. That's for sure in my top three. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. I figured they were because I think you and I, we've been there before, I think, together, and we've also talked about it. But, yeah, I like I like those places a yeah, lot. Yeah, we've gone there a few times taking clients there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That restaurant. But I wish they made that restaurant bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, but they don't have to. They're completely packed every single time. You have to make reservations like one or two months in advance. Yeah. Bridges, I usually, Bridges is good too, Mark in Danville. If you're Bridges, over, Bridges is good. Yeah, and they have their wine bar that's on the on Danville Boulevard on the street. But Bridges sits back behind it. It's where they filmed Mrs. Doubtfire. But, oh, really? Uh, yeah, their food's good. And also, I got to put a plug in for Primos, where my daughters both work, and I'm friends with the owner, P- Primos Pizza and Pasta in Danville. That's good, also. Okay. Nice. Um, so that's basically all the time that we have here on the podcast so um i want to thank you for coming on to the podcast My pleasure thank you for having yeah, me it was fun and hopefully some people got some good solid tips on i mean i, I think you're like a master realtor that um everyone should study you and what you do and 
like what we talked about, it really comes down to consistency and just making sure you're doing the same thing over and over again. And, you know, eventually people know you for yeah. doing that. No doubt. This consistency. And I think the also too, you know, my motto is, is I try I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. That's a kind of a simple thing that I know that our parents tell us that when we're growing up. Right. But it's kind of really like my motto for business. I just want to treat people the way that I want to be treated. Yeah. You know? And if you give more, and expect less. Yeah. It's amazing how you, in the long term totally. of things, you actually make more. You're 100% right. Yeah. It's just that mentality yeah. switch and not really focusing on the short term dollar. Exactly. You know, just focus on the service That's... and the experience. Forget the dollar. The dollar eventually comes. You're 100% right. I mean, I used to, there used to be like something a guy told me. He says, focus on the people, not on the money. You know, focus on you know, their satisfaction and not on the money. Yeah. The money will come. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on to the podcast. We're drinking some amazing yeah, wine here. That's getting we're better and better ahead, too. Go ahead and finish here. It's called the, again, the competitor and it is from Lodi, California. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's amazing. All the wines coming from Lodi. Like, I always thought Napa was the biggest producer of wine, and it's really not. They only produce 4% of the wines out of California. And California produces, like, 95% of the wines in the entire United States. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of the wine is coming from Lodi. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited because I remember years ago, if a wine was from Lodi, it usually wasn't the best-tasting wine, and... You know, you could buy it for like 4 or $5, and now you have some really expensive wine coming out of there. Yeah, so. I wish I could remember the name of that one winery. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to figure it out. Yeah. Like I said, they were. it was phenomenal. It's a Syrah. It comes out, it comes out of Lodi. It's the last name of somebody that I know, but I can't think of it. Okay. Well, if you find it, let me know. I will. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. I really enjoyed recording this episode. Gary has a lot of knowledge to share. One piece of advice I have for real estate agents wanting to improve is to find a top producing agent in the area. There are ways to find agents that sell a lot of real estate. Find them and study them. See what they do and copy them. But don't forget to add your own personal twist to it. Gary does not do podcasting or videos or Snapchat or Facebook ads or Instagram. He doesn't do much digital marketing, but that's okay. He's an expert in the marketing what he does already and he stays consistent he stayed consistent over many years 30 years now in the business it's not always about doing the fresh new trend many times it's simply about caring about the people care for your clients and they will in turn care about your business thank you to our producer sam lumman and subscribe to the mark guzman podcast experience on itunes podbean and iHeartRadio. thank you I really, really want to thank all of you for listening. It means the world to me, and I hope today's episode provides you value in your day-to-day -day life. I created this podcast to help showcase the many great people that live in this world and help share some knowledge that I've learned along the way in life. Again, thank you for listening. Check out our sponsors, and I'll catch you on the next episode.